Hi everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Okay, so today we are going to go over what I'm calling secondary table logic. Now, I have actually showcased this a couple of different ways, but I want to call it a technique and call it a concept so that you can get into your mind how you could reuse this in a number of different ways. And I'm going to show you one way that we can do it and um, create a really cool insight, a really dynamic insight. And then you can see how you could then implement the secondary table of logic inside your models across or on top of any uh, measure that you create or variable or core calculation you, you create. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to work out for the last, so in a dynamic way, I want to say, go and look at how many sales a salesperson has made in the last, say, 60 days. And then based on that, I want to dynamically uh, say, well, are they a good, a good are they uh, you know, one of our top salespeople? Are they one of our bottom salespeople? Are they sort of mid-range salespeople? But the key thing here is I want it to dynamically update. So as we go through time, we can look back in the last 60 days and see, basically see who's trending, who, who, which salespeople at any 60 day period are actually selling really well. And you know, and those are the people we can go focus on or we can go and see, see what's actually happening, why they're actually getting good results, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I've, um, uh, just just of note, this is not a uh, dynamic data set. So this is just static in terms of I've built a demo data set and then it just sort of sits there, I don't update it, etc. So I've had to just create a formula which goes and retrieves the very last day of my sales table. And that is what I'm deeming today. But in your own data sets, you might actually have, you know, it might be live all the time, right? So every single day it, will, it would be updating. But from this, I can then uh, feed this into a calculation and I can say, well, transactions last last 60 days like so and then I can I can uh, create this calculation which jumps down and then I go calculate uh, count rows of the sales table and then I'm just going to this is how I'm gonna I'm gonna open the window I'm gonna open the 60 day window the dynamic 60 day window here and I'm gonna say okay we'll filter all dates and then I'm going to iterate through the date table and say, well, if uh, if the particular date is greater than, uh, say, the last date, so that's my dynamic today, uh, minus 60, and the date is uh, the date is less than or equal to the last date. This is going to this this is uh, this is this this formula that I just created is going to show me the total sales that any salesperson has made in the last sixty days on a rolling basis as you move through time. So you could implement this in your own models, and it would be a dynamic calc, right? So we can say the uh, and and you could use this on um on a different context as well, right? So it would be exactly the same formula, but in this case, we're trying to find this insight. So I'm saying, okay, well, this uh, let's just let's just filter it. So these these are the, uh, these are our worst salespeople. And these are our best salespeople, right? And so we can, we could then um, use some data bars here, and just have this one green and this one a bit darker, even though they're always going to be positive, right? Um, but now we can see, okay, well these, if, if you think about it, these are our top salespeople based on the last 60 days. In my data set, it's a static date, um, obviously, but this would change through time, right? Because this. Um, this this number here, this last date would be like today, for example. It would be today for, for your live, live data set. Okay, but now this is where the secondary table logic comes in, right? We I want to then go and group these guys. I want to go and group these guys and girls, these our salespeople. I want to say, well, the, these if, if they're selling this many products, like say greater than 20, then I classify these as a top salespeople. We, we might reward these people. We might say, okay, well, these people get bonuses or something or something of that nature. And then these ones, we, we might know we might need to even fire these people because they're just not selling enough, you know, they're not showing up to work or something like that. Okay, and so this is where that secondary logic comes in because you've got to think this is a dynamic calculation. We can't go and put this into some table or the or the lookup table. We need to be able to iterate through this number and into some logic uh, into a secondary table to then group these people. Okay, so this is how you do it. So I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to create another table here. I'm going to say um, salespeople logic. And then I'm going to say um, salespeople group, 
And so you could have this in a, you, could, you know, if this was a little bit more complex, you could obviously have this in um, uh, Excel as well. But because I'm just going to keep it relatively simple here, um, I can just I, I can just type it in. So we've got top salespeople, and then we've got um, OK salespeople, and then we've got poor salespeople. And then we've got to create our min and we've got to create our max here. And I'm going to say, well, if someone gets over 18 sales uh, in the last 60 days, then that's going to, um, they're going to be a top salesperson. If they say between, let's say 12 and 18, I'm going to say they're an okay salesperson. And if they're below, say 12, so I'm going to go 0 to 12 then they're a poor salesperson and we should be um, you know we should be really looking at what, uh, what 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 they're achieving maybe i might actually put this to 20 and that opens up our okay so sales people a little bit more okay so then i can go okay and so that will now be inside our model right but the key here with the secondary table is there is no relationship with our data model so let's just jump in here and you'll see that um that just sits out here and we don't connect it to anything because we don't need to right and then we need this is where we need to iterate through that table right we need to iterate through it so let's just go have a quick look at it and you'll see here that we need to say okay for each salesperson and that result that we that we got what group are they now in so are they in say this group this top did they sell between 10 20 to, to 100 did they sell this much did they sell this much etc okay so now we need to write a formula which enables us to work out what that is and this is the formula that we need to write. So we need to write, create a new measure first. So I'm just going to create this new measure. I'm, I'm going to call this one uh, sales salespeople performance group. So bit bit of a longer name, but again, we're going to we're, we're going to actually be returning a uh, a text value here, right? Because we're we're trying to put these put these people into a group. And so um, if I just go OK, uh, sorry, I just go equals and then I'm just going to go down to a new row and then I'm going to go calculate and I'm going to use this great function called selected value and then I'm going to put this in, I'm going to go and find because we need to return this text value, right? So the text value is going to be what group this particular person or this particular salesperson is in. And so this is going to return that, it's going to only return as one value, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and then uh, we can also put an alternative result in here. So just in case, let's just go blank there. That's probably good because that will actually return um, blank in the in the total. And then this is where we need to uh, we need to implement our secondary table logic. Okay, so we're going to say we, we need to iterate through that table. So I'm going to go filter because filter allows us to iterate. And then I'm going to go all salespeople logic. So I'm going to go make sure that there's nothing filtered on that particular table. And then for every single row in that table, remember it's only three rows long, I'm gonna say, we'll go and work out, is the transactions for this particular salesperson greater than or equal to the min? And is it, is the transactions less than the max? Like so, okay. And so let's just quickly go over again. We are going, we are looking at it and we're saying, okay, well, um, Brick, tell me the group that this particular salesperson is in. And remember, we're looking, that group will be dynamic because this measure is dynamic, right? And so we're saying for every single row of the salespeople logic table, the one we just created, go and, go and evaluate, is this 28 in this case, this very first row here, is it greater than or equal to the min in any of those rows? And is it also less than uh, to the max in any of those rows? And if it is, then return that actual group that they are in. So we push enter, and then if I bring this into my table, you'll now see that I have the particular group that that person is in. And that is why I call it secondary table logic, right? We have gone and grabbed uh, a, a particular figure from uh, another table, a secondary table, and we've brought it in via measures into our model because there's no relationship um, via some formula. We iterated through the table, tested some logic on that table, and then via, um, based on what that evaluation was, we then were able to bring that uh, bring that result into our table. And now we can see that this is um, the, the the group that our salespeople are in, right? 
And to think, if you think about it, you don't actually need, and that what's so powerful is you don't actually need those intermediary calcs, right? So I could actually get rid of those, and you're still going to return. You're still going to return the result because everything is happening in behind the scenes with that um, with that logic. It's all happening inside of the formula. It's doing all the hard work for us. Okay, so hopefully you like this technique. This uh, this video went on a little bit longer than, uh, than I anticipated. But we covered a lot, right? And I'm glad that I've gone through, you know, been able to sort of um, refine my 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 own thinking around the secondary table logic, right? And there's just ridiculous applications for this, just everywhere, just absolutely everywhere. And the fact that it's dynamic is what really excites me, right? Because if this was on a dynamic, a live data set, this would just constantly be updating. And at any time, you'd be able to look at this number and say, okay, well, these are these are these are our trending salespeople. They're the ones who are really going, you know, who are really nailing it at the moment. Moment. And you know, ultimately, you could also just see how these things change through time. Um, yeah, it's just, just endless applications. My mind sort of explodes with the applications of this. Okay, so I'm just going to round it off there. All the best with this. You can download um, this resource just via a small investment. Check out the description. Uh, if you like the content, throw us a like on the video. Really appreciate it. Uh, and, and certainly don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, all the best. Talk to you soon. Cheers.